Hi guys, uh, so Kings of Convenience, Mrs. Cold. Uh, that picking pattern. Uh, but just before I go through the picking pattern, let me make an adjustment to what I said about the chords, picking the chords. Um, I was going like this. Which is uh, using part of a E flat major seven at the sixth fret and part of an A flat major seven at the fourth fret. Um, a shape at the sixth fret and E shape at the fourth fret. Um, so I was picking before on the E flat major seven, I was picking obviously the A string for the root note, E flat, and then I was picking the D and G strings. But um, for some reason, which I, I didn't hear it before, um, I can hear now that they're playing these notes which is not quite an E major 7, it's an E major 9, a slightly more complex chord, because you've got the ninth note of the scale in there as well as the seventh note of the scale. So instead of this sound, you've got that sound. So this makes it easier um, to go from one chord to the another because you can maintain almost the same shape. It's just the bass note changes from the A string to the E string. But so this is what I'm doing. I'm using my first finger on the A string. This is for the E flat major seven chord or major nine. Um, you can use those interchangeably for our purposes. So first finger is on the sixth fret of the A string. Yeah, so you should get that note. Then um, second finger is on the sixth fret, same fret, on the B string. So we've got A string, B string, sixth fret, and then just one more finger that's on the seventh fret of the G string. So I've got these notes A string, G string, B string, six, seven, six. And when I pluck between thumb and fingers, get that sound okay should sound like that now this makes it easier to change chords because when you're going from the E flat major 7 to the A flat major 7 can you see what I did there the first finger comes off fingers 2 and 3 maintain their position their anchor fingers they stay on the strings slide down two frets so fingers 2 and 3 go from fret 6 and fret 7 down to fret 4 and fret 5. So we go from here to there, okay? So that'll be your chord change for those fingers. And the first finger goes from the A string, fret 6, to the E string, fret 4. Okay, so hopefully that makes it a bit easier. Well, it does make it a bit easier. Okay, so now that's um, addressed, uh, the picking pattern. Now, it's a two-bar pattern, a sort of bossa nova type thing, and the first bar we did, which is one and two and three and, is really 16th notes, it's really one E and a two E. Is it? Actually, I'm not sure right now. But we're gonna count it as eighth notes, okay? Um, because it's easier than going 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and 1E and a whoops 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a um if we count that as eighth notes, I, I find it easier to remember one and two and three and so that's the first bar, one and two and three and. So we've got, pluck the bass note on beat one, the treble notes on beat two, and then again on the and of three. So we've got one and two and three and. I'll do that again. One and two and three and. And then the second bar, 
you're going to pluck on beat one and the and of beat two. So it's going to sound like this. One and two and three and four and 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 so I hope that's okay. Um, to keep in time, I do, I keep my sort of hand moving because I find it difficult to keep in time just plucking the notes when they're needed. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. And four and one and two. Of course you can do it, but I kind of keep my hand just a bit pulsing one and two and three and four and, and you can see what I'm basically doing is just like moving a thumb towards the strings and then pulling away from the strings one and two and three and four and and I'm not doing it all the time but I'm doing it in between certain notes, yeah, certain plucked notes. So one and two, I'm not moving my hand in between. You might want to. One and, oh well, no, it's pretty difficult. You don't really have time. So one and two and three and four and, and then I'm doing this to keep in time because it's pretty difficult getting those hits or plucks in the right place in the bar if your hand isn't moving to keep yourself in time. You know, like when you're strumming, Your hand's moving all the time to keep in time, and then you're emphasizing certain strums. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and one and two and that's it. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and so if I was doing that same pattern but strumming, you can see how my hand would keep moving. I wouldn't go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and or one and two and three and four and one and two and three. That would be really difficult to get the strums in the right place if I didn't keep my hand moving to keep myself in time. So I'm talking about that principle and it's the same principle when I'm plucking. Yeah, I'm doing this to keep myself in time. And then you can hear, yeah, you can hear these muted notes. And that's okay, I quite like that because it's like. Yeah, it's, to me, it's, it's adding to the sound. It's like I've got a bit, of, a bit of a percussionist, rhythm section percussionist going on as well as the actual notes, yeah? So instead of this. sounds to me pretty empty. One and two and three and four. Now, this bit I'm getting by um, when I need the notes, I press down on the strings, and when I just want the percussion, or when I want to also make the notes staccato rather than legato, so short rather than long, I don't want this. That's keeping my fingers pressed down all the time. So what I do is, as soon as I plucked, I release the pressure on the strings. I keep the fingers on the strings so that the strings are muted, but I release the pressure so that I'm not getting a note, but I'm getting that muted sound. And there is no right or wrong about how many times should I do this. It's really down to you, what you feel. Maybe you feel like just going one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... If you do, absolutely fine. But like I said, I find it easier to keep in time with a bit of movement. One and two and three and four.
and like I said that movement is just all I'm doing is just plucking either hitting with my thumb or plucking with my thumb or plucking with my fingers Whoops. and basically I'm not even really plucking with my thumb for the muting part I'm just doing this movement so bringing the hand down on the strings and then pulling the hand away and plucking the muted strings which gives me my timing one E and uh, or one and two and three and four and etc. Yeah, and like I said, I don't have time to do it everywhere between beats one and two. One and two, I don't need to do it because I'm plucking enough, moving enough to keep myself in time anyway. But when I get those bigger spaces in the bar with only one pluck like in the last half of the first bar, one and two and three and four and. I put in that and, I just probably do it all the time, not really thinking about it, but I probably do it all the time to keep myself in time. Otherwise you've got the last half of the bar completely empty except for the pluck on the and of three. One and two and three and four and. Yeah, so after that pluck on the end of three, one and two and three and four and the beat four I just find I want to do some sort of movement to keep myself in time right so I probably labored that point quite a lot so hopefully that's okay the two bar pattern once again just go over it one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and oh and then I didn't use my anchor fingers there right yeah, so remember that fingers two and three stay in position go down two frets one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and okay hope that helps